Hi everyone, we're back for more. We're up to Unit 2, Day 3, the sourcing tool for ninth grade. Today we're going to actually look at a source of the power of the medieval church. Now just to remind everyone, the sourcing tool, okay, asks you to look at titles, source information, and format of the document is the first step. Step 2, over here, you need to make connections to prior knowledge and information for the document's content. Step three, you need to read the document, and while you're reading, you're going to continue to make inferences, ask questions, and make connections to the margins. You're going to summarize the central ideas, and how do the central ideas connect with step one and step two. Finally, you're going to reread, and in step four, you're going to, using your information from the first three steps, look for the author's perspective, purpose, and bias. Remember last video, I suggested that you color code your perspective, your purpose, and your bias. Okay, so now let's take a look. Here's a source. Okay, I'm going to suggest that you pause the video and you read the source. It's a source that goes on for two slides. It's called A Purchase of Tithes and Remission of Attacks 1246 by Unknown. Okay. The blurb is always a place to find out some information, so I will read that to you. You're going to read the rest on your own. Notice there's words in bold that will give you explanations. If you don't know what other words mean, please go to dictionary.com. Maybe your teacher would give you other explanations or rewordify if that helps you for this source. Okay, so the practice of giving tithes or a tenth to the Catholic Church during medieval times was a common economic practice in the law in Europe. A tithe, or that tenth, was a tax that you paid in addition to the king's or local lord's tax. To not pay your tithe to the church, a person and their family could face being excommunicated. Excommunicated meaning banned from the church, which in those days was very important to be part of. Everything surrounded the church. So pause the video now, read it, remember. You're looking for the title, source, format historical context for step one and two. Okay, now that you've unpaused the video, time to read the next slide. It continues. Again, if you need help, rewordify, dictionary.com, or I'm sure your teacher will help you. Okay, if you're playing this video again, that means you've come up with something. Well, let's see if what you came up with compares to what the lovely social studies people from New York City came up with. Okay, so step one, their title and source. It's a purchase of tithes and remission of a tax, 1246. I read that to you. Format, it's a primary source. Format meaning what type of source is it? What type of document? Like, especially when you go later in history, it tells you it's a print, it's a speech. Well, here, it's just telling you it's something from 1246. It is a primary source. The document seems to be, notice how they said that seems to be an announcement because we don't have know exactly where it came from. It doesn't say it in the source. We're making an inference by Margareta, Countess of Flanders, and Hainault. Now, what is the historical context? Feudal Europe, that's Europe during medieval times, during the Middle Ages, according to the document summary, Giving a tax of one-tenth to the Catholic Church was the law. This was in addition to the taxes that you also had to pay the king. Remember, we got that out of that blurb in the beginning. They're calling it a document summary. If you did not pay your tithe to the church, you could be excommunicated, which means you could be banned. Notice they took the context from the blurb. You could technically and should be doing steps one and two probably before you read anything. Okay, for clues just as they did. Now, step three, they said, read the document as you did while reading, continue to annotate, to make inferences, ask questions, make connections. Let's see what they came up with. It's going to need some explanation. Okay, what is their central idea? How did they summarize in their own words? Notice they wrote, it seems, because, again, they're making inferences, so they're trying to use that kind of language. It seems like, and in this announcement, Notice they're not speaking an absolute language. They're saying kind of, we think, because they're making a difference. Margareta, Countess of Flanders and Hainault, is speaking to the church or perhaps an even larger audience, including the church, that she and her family, maybe the royal family, noble family, we don't know. There's a lot of maybes here. We're making inferences from a primary source. Have purchased the tithes and 
from others and are broadcasting that they're giving it to the church, meaning they purchased the whole big amount that they're going to give to the church for themselves and for other people. Now, do you notice ideas or facts that support your observations step one and step two? What are the connections? Well, they're speaking about tithes, right? And they're kind of protecting people's ideas that are they're giving things to the church and they're telling everyone they're doing it. Let's see what they came up with the social studies people. One connection to the historical context that Margareta could be covering the tithes and other taxes of these lower of those lower in the feudal hierarchy than her family because perhaps the peasant serfs and others she describes cannot afford the cost of the tithes. So they are covering the cost of them so that they are not excommunicated. Notice they use the language men of God, meaning that they won't get cut off from the church. While this seems noble to do, peasants and thirds will always owe Margareta more and they will stay in her debt for a longer period of time. They're going to owe, they owe her for paying for them. In this way, the tithe is one more way that the church exerts or puts forward its power over everyone, while the nobles use the opportunity to strengthen their power over the peasants and serfs. Now, if any of this language was hard for you, this could have gone to dictionary.com. Any of this, any of those words, or rewordify if you need things simplified. Okay, now you're going to reread this document again for deeper analysis, because remember, we're heading in to look for the perspective, purpose, and bias. Okay, so here's the first slide. You're looking for perspective, purpose, and bias. You may want to highlight with the different colors as you read it. Pause the video now. Give yourself a good read. Take notes. You may want to highlight if you have it in Google Slides. Now you're going to read the second part of the source. And again, you're looking for perspective purpose and bias. Pause the video. I'm ready, ready to continue. Okay, you must be ready because you kept going. Okay, let's see what the social studies people came up with. For perspective, okay, how do they kind of see the point of view? What do they think? They think that this document, let's see what they wrote. The document is written for the respect of Margareta, Countess of Flanders and Hainault, who we infer as part of the royal family, part of the landowning noble. In the announcement, we get a sense of the roles of other parts of feudal hierarchy, including those lower than Margareta, such as serfs and peasants, but we don't hear their voices. Also, while we don't know the exact perspective of the church, we can infer, remember we're figuring things out because we're working with the primary source, some of the perspective is the ultimate tax collector. The perspective of the document helps us understand the structure of power in the Middle Ages, meaning the rich people were paying ties to the church and controlling other people. The purpose, let's jump to the real meat and potatoes connecting to the central idea. The purpose, remember this is the what and the why. Again, the purpose of making this announcement is to make it known to the church that Margareta and her royal or noble family are both taking care of those below them in the feudal hierarchy by paying their taxes and therefore keeping them in the church at the same time making sure the church knows they are faithful to it. Hmm. It's quite a message. Now, what's the bias? What glasses or lenses? What's the motive here? Because we only have the perspective of Margareta in this document, we are unsure of the process by which they decided to pay the tithes of others. Did others want Margareta to take it on their, tax, their taxes and debts? Did they have a say in it? The document provides insight on the role of the royal or noble land owning family, as well as the power imbalance that existed in the feudal hierarchy. But we would need to know more about how this all came to be. Remember, again, we're making inferences. Okay, now here's what you're going to do. Now that we showed this to you, you're going to analyze a primary source from medieval times in Western Europe to learn about the power of the church. Um, it says choose either document A or B, and then you're going to use the sourcing tool. I'm telling you that we're going to choose document A. You're going to read this now, just like we did before. If you want, you can reread. If you want, you can rewatch and reread. Just remind yourself what we did before this. Then you're going to do step one and two. You probably can do that just by looking at the blurb over here. So pause and take a look. Then step three, you're going to come up with the central idea. You're going to make the connection back to step one and two. Then you're going to read it again. You may want a color code for perspective, purpose, and bias. And then you're going to fill this out.
Again, you could watch this all over and read this all again because you're going to be a pro at the sourcing tool because you watch this video.